And now the starting lineup for your 2007 Bridgeport Bluebirds. From the upper deck of the stadium of Bridgeport's minor league ball club, fans have a great view of the house. A lone white boarded up three-story Victorian sitting among acres of weeds. Bridgeporters have concocted some urban myths to explain why it's there. It belongs to some black footballer. So it's, it's haunted? It, looks, it's, it, it really is creepy. Oh, I just know it was from a baseball player from a long time ago. Yeah, back in the 50s or something like that. No? Way back? Way back, back. 30s? 20s? Uh-oh. But very few Bridgeporters, or anyone for that matter, have been in the house since it was abandoned in 1999. Hello? Anybody here? Mike Balava and Bernie Crowley entered the house recently. They head up an organization called The First Hit. It's dedicated to preserving the house and the memory of the man who built it, an old baseball player named James O'Rourke. All the baseball history that came through these rooms. Crowley explains that O'Rourke got the very first hit in the National League in 1876, and then he helped build Bridgeport into a thriving city. Hall of Famer, uh, who grew up here, who chose after his career to come back here to Bridgeport, to become involved in, in community projects, to become involved in politics. Broken glass underneath our feet, and there's a kind of a ridge where it would be easy to twist an ankle. Crumbled plaster covers the floors, the dust releases rancid smells, and occasionally strange sounds drown out the rumble of the highway. Still, Crowley insists the house could be preserved. You know, it's architecturally sound. The problem, it stands on land, that Bridgeport has slated for a residential commercial development called Steel Point. Eight years ago, the city demolished half a dozen blocks, but preservationists saved the house. The developer still wants it gone. Or it could be moved. Crowley and Balava say the mayor, John Fabrizi, proposed the site of the North End Little League field and that they had donors lined up and they were all set. And we were told by Fabrizi, went back for another meeting. We were told by Fabrizi that that wasn't a viable option. And did he say why? No. That's news to me. The mayor says he still supports the North End plan. As long as the Little League was supporting that, yes, I would support it on behalf of the city of Bridgeport. So maybe there is hope for the house yet. But everyone, Crowley, Balava, the mayor, say that every day it stands abandoned. The house risks being burned down, ruined by vandals or the weather, or eventually bulldozed by the developers. O'Rourke was born in East Bridgeport in 1850 and grew up playing baseball in fields and pastures not far from where we are tonight. Back at the stadium this past Friday night, the announcer told O'Rourke's story to the crowd, many of whom probably had not heard of him. It was part of the presentation of an award in the player's name, given by Crowley and Lava's organization, to somebody who shows a commitment both to baseball and the community. This year it went to the Bluefish's owners. Crowley and Balava say that even if the house cannot be preserved, they're doing what they can to keep O'Rourke's memory alive. And fans in the upper deck can still see that little piece of Bridgeport history standing among the weeds. And from that distance, at least, it doesn't quite look like it's crumbling. Eric Campano, WSHU News.